Well, I think there was a level of frustration amongst uh, us at City Council, the Police Services Board, uh, the rank and file, uh, the broader public, uh, that nothing was happening. You know, the, the, the protesters were becoming more and more entrenched. They were bringing in big screens, popcorn machines, bouncy castles, and the like. And uh, none of this was being stopped as it was being brought in. It just didn't seem to register. Why would we allow all of these supplies to continue to go through? Uh, and I think the other problem is that we saw too many examples where promises were made and they just didn't deliver. You know, we're going to crack down this weekend. Nothing happened. We're going to crack down on, uh, you know, gas cans uh, coming in. And there was some success at that, but you st still on your network showed a number of people with their carts bringing in gasoline. So there was an overall sense of frustration because there was not clearly any movement to uh, bring this uh, situation to a head. Really, for me, the tipping point was we went into the third weekend, uh, and uh, again, uh, nothing happened. Uh, there was no movement that I could spot or that we have heard about from uh, the Ottawa police. And, and this is not a criticism of the police officers. They have a tough job in miserable conditions. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, the chief did the right thing by sending in his resignation. And, and uh, it's not easy to, to do. You know, it's um, he's only been with us a couple of years. But uh, obviously, I think he felt um, it was time for him to go as well. Just, just to be clear, you lost confidence in his ability to deal with the crisis. Well, uh, we didn't see any uh, activity that would show that we had a plan to actually reduce um, uh, the uh, entry into the the red zone, the so-called red zone. Um, he did have, you know, uh, tactical plans that he was sharing with the OPP and the RCMP. But uh, clearly, uh, they were not satisfied with it. And at the end of the day, we need all three police services and all three orders of government to work together on this because it's just too big for the city of Ottawa. Well, according to, I watched the police board. They say there's only 150 people and under 400 trucks. So the question is, is it too big? This is a live shot, Mayor. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a live shot of Wellington. This is right in front of Parliament Hill. You made a back channel negotiation with one of the putative leaders, Tamara Litch, who's in charge of raising the money, uh, to move trucks out of residential areas here. And now they're jam-packed on, on, on Wellington. Did you run that by Chief Soli first, or were you back-channeling with the truckers on your own because you'd lost faith with the police to do anything? No, we informed the police and, and the chief. They knew about it. This, as you know, Evan, was the number one priority I had was to help those residential communities that were suffering, waking up in the morning in the stench of diesel because these trucks had been going all night long, blaring music, honking their horns, vulgarity uh, in, in, the, in the street. And uh, on the first day yesterday, we were able to get out 43 uh, heavy trucks out of 120 that are in residential neighborhoods. And we'll have another number tomorrow for today's um, uh, convoy of, of trucks that we're able to get out of the residential areas. You know, people have criticized, well, but why... You haven't, but you haven't moved them. I mean, the, the worry is that you haven't gotten rid of them. You just moved them from one part of the city now to the other part. I guess the concern and the criticism for you is you've now elevated these people who you've called illegal, They've laid, according to the Premier, a siege. They, this is uh, someone who had signed a memorandum of understanding that wanted to th overthrow the government. She's been working, Tamara Leach, as a maverick party to separate, country, uh, to separate our country. And you then, by elevating her to a negotiating partner, have legitimized these people as leaders and negotiated. Have you frankly undermined uh, the, the authority of government and elevated these folks to legitimate political negotiators? No, I disagree with that. My number one priority was to give some uh, peace and, and um, tranquility to the people in the residential communities. You know, not one single person, Evan, as you know, lives on Wellington Street. So the truckers, the politicians, they're not suffering. It's the people a few blocks in that live in the residential communities that have been subjected to people trying to handcuff their doors, uh, start a fire in their lobby, uh, catcall women using homophobic slur slurs and, and the like. And my obligation was, how can we get this resolved? Yes, uh, we've moved them. We've moved them into a more contained area from a security point of view, but we've, more importantly, we've got them out of those neighborhoods. How would you like to have a truck well, outside your, your house 
for th three weeks. It's, it's unbearable, and we had yeah, to do but, something. But, 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 but Mayor, I, I agree. But first of all, it, it's still a very serious issue on Wellington. They're still shutting down businesses. They're still on other streets like Metcalf. Let me just ask you this. Now that there's an integrated command center, the OPP and the RCMP are in charge. You're negotiating with these people. Maybe there's going to be more negotiation. There's now the Emergency Act. When are we going to see action on the scene? I'm, I'm showing our viewers right now, day 19. When do you yeah. expect action th on that scene? Well, again, that decision is going to be made by the three police services. And I, I talked to both uh, uh, Marco and Bill, uh, Minister Blair and, and uh, Mendocini, for, uh, to, to give them an update in terms of our chief resigning. And uh, the, the new chief, uh, acting chief uh, Steve Bell, who I have great confidence in, uh, we'll put together plans uh, and finalize plans with those two other uh, police services. And uh, I can't give you a specific date, nor if I did have the date, I wouldn't give it to you, because why are we going to share our strategic plans with those people who we're trying to get out of that site as quickly as possible? Because they've overstayed their welcome okay. by a long shot. Okay, I just have one. When you did the back channel to Tamara Litch and the truckers, uh, I understand that you used as a mediator the former chief of staff to Doug Ford, Dean French. Can you confirm that he was your mediator between you? Dean French was the mediator between the mayor and the truckers. Yeah, I can't confirm that because uh, the individual asked for anonymity, and I respected that. So I'm not going to break my word. But you're not saying it's wrong. <laughs> I'll give you the same answer I gave you 10 seconds ago. The bottom line I is... I've got to leave it there. Yeah, Go just, just one point. My number one preoccupation, and that of our council members who represent the downtown core, is to get that area cleaned up as quickly as possible and do as little damage between now and when any right. action takes place by the police uh, to those people who have been put through hell for the last three weeks. Uh, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson will find out if there is action now that the Emergencies Act has been uh, uh, invoked and there's an, the chief is gone. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Evan. Bye-bye.